Yes, you can create timelines in PowerPoint by using shapes or via the smart art option. But what if you could create a timeline by doing nothing other than just typing in a bulleted list as you can see on the slide on your screen now and then make PowerPoint change the content into a properly formatted timeline for you? Wouldn't that be cool? In this tutorial, let us learn how you can achieve this trick in PowerPoint 365 for Windows. Now, it's important to understand that these options only work in subscription versions versions of Office like Office 365 and PowerPoint 365, which is part of Office 365. If you use a perpetual version like PowerPoint 2019 or PowerPoint 2016, these options may not work for you. So you really need to help PowerPoint a little bit, understanding that the slide that you have created, the content that you have in your bulleted list is some sort of a time-related subject. If you look at the slide that we have on the screen now, we have dates and on the left, then we have a space and a hyphen and a space, and then we are describing what's actually going to happen on that date. And if you look at the second slide that we have over here, we have just the same content, but we put the date on the first level bullet and the second level bullet, the sub bullet, is where we have put content that describes what's going to happen on that date. Now let's look at slide three, where we have almost the same type of content, but then what we have done, there is no space after the date. So for PowerPoint, this doesn't look like a date because the date won't have a colon over here, okay? So it does not go and, 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 and does, it has a space and a colon has some certain, a different other meaning, probably based on minutes and seconds or stuff like that. So if you go and put something around the way we have on this slide, PowerPoint may not recognize this as something that needs a timeline. Let's go and see how this works. So we are on slide number one, and we have the Design Ideas task pane on the right. Assuming we don't have the Design Ideas task pane showing, so I'm just going to close the Design Ideas task pane. And how do we get it back? Uh, we can go to the Home tab, and we have a command over here, button over there, to get the Design Ideas task pane. And a similar button is also available on the Design tab of the ribbon. Let's choose any one of them, and now we get the Design tab Ideas task pane on the right side. Notice that PowerPoint sort of recognizes that a timeline is a proper slide to go and represent the content on our slide. And if you look at the second example here, it's a timeline. Let's scroll down. And yes, we have one more timeline here. Okay, results that you see may differ from what's happening now because this is an intelligent in service, you know, powered by my, the Office Intelligent Services as noted here. And... Uh, Things get continuously updated, and uh, what layouts you see, the, even the layouts that I see today may be different from what I'm going to see next week. So don't expect to get the same content over there, same suggestions, and suggestions are different from people to people based on your usage patterns. PowerPoint is going to give you different recommendations. So let's just go and undo this one now and go to the second slide. And again, let's look for timeline representations. Again, we have one year, and we have another one year. And we have a third one too. So for some reason, when you have bullets and sub-bullets, PowerPoint sort of gives you more timeline options. But let's go to the third slide where we don't have a space and we have a colon. And you'll notice that there are no timelines available at all. So it's very important that you understand that how you have to go to format your content in your bulleted list so that PowerPoint can recognize that as a timeline and give you those ideas. Okay, now what exactly is time? You use dates over here, but PowerPoint can work with a lot of other type of time, okay? Uh, now look at stuffs like this. The most important thing is it has to be sequential. You can have December 23rd, and then you can't have December 18th, and then you have January 25th. So it has to be sequential for it to be like a timeline. Then you can use dates. You can use days as in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and for the days of the week. You can use days of another type, yesterday, today, tomorrow, day after. You can use months, okay, and you can use years. And you can use a combination of these as well. And so it logically looks like it's something to do with time. And then PowerPoint actually goes and provides recommendations to you for timeline slides on the design ideas. <coughs> let's go to the first slide again now. And uh, let's choose one of the timelines. Let's We'll go and choose this particular one. And our timeline is applied over there. Okay, do note that all the timeline graphics that PowerPoint creates for you as part of design ideas 
art smart art graphics how can we know that you just go and select any of them and you will notice that the smart art design contextual tab shows up for you also when you select this smart art graphic you can see the text pane over here now this is a text pane button over here if i click on it it hides the text pane and if i click on it again it reveals the text pane so what if i want to add another you know time stop there so i'm on the last time stop that is 19 december 2016 market and we are in 2019 now it's three years since so maybe um, it's time to reevaluate this go for a version 2 product redevelop it so what we can do is we can just hit the enter key it actually adds another sub bullet we don't want that so let's go and press shift tab okay so it adds another bullet at this point of time i'm just going to type in 20th december and they have a dot there so let's go and keep it constant 2019 and hit the tab over there notice it's creating a timeline content as we speak dynamically getting created over there there you go so you could just go and add something over there but what if you, you could similarly go and add something right in the middle somewhere so uh, since we have something on 5th december 2016 what if i go and hit enter here it adds a sub bullet we don't want a sub bullet we want a first level bullet so i press the shift tab key shortcut key to promote that one and i'm going to put another date there maybe say we'll just go and put say 10th december 2016 and let's go and say second prototype so as you can see the timelines that you create are all editable and you can go and add on to them and get them to work how you want them to work and again just because this question has been asked what if you want to get back to your original bulleted text from here rather than the timeline so what do you do it's pretty simple select your smart art graphic go to the smart art design tab on the ribbon and then you have this option in the end called convert and you just say convert to text and you get your bulleted content back there okay so you get your content you don't get in the exact format that you started with but you still get that back and uh, if you really uh, do not want to lose your timeline along with that you could just press undo and get to your slide and press the control d shortcut d key to duplicate your slide and then go to the duplicated slide and change it back to text i hope you enjoyed this uh, series on our powerpoint designer set of tutorials uh, look forward for more tutorials and i look forward to having you back here thank you and have a wonderful day explore more concepts at indesign.com indesign make better presentations fast